What's up, YouTube? Gilly Wright's comics and stuff here for you. Um, kind of excited. I got three subscribers, <laughs> which is awesome because, I mean, I just put some videos out there. And uh, it's cool that three people subscribe. So I, I take that as a, a sign of me having to put out at least some more stuff. So just to create some type of content. Um, this is my first stab at having my own channel. I am a comic book writer. I do have a live Indiegogo campaign going on for Lair, but before I even talk about that, or we probably won't even talk about that for this video, I just kind of want to talk about how I started writing comics altogether. Uh, my first project wasn't Lair. Lair is actually my first completed project. Um, and just to give you guys a quick peek, uh, Lair. So this is my first completed work in that it's a story with a beginning, middle, and end. Um, so that's where Lair is at. But Under the Flesh was my first jump into comic book writing. I had my own little corner box logo, Escape Comics, which I was kind of good. I wanted to go with something simple and iconic. Um, and I think I got to bring Escape Comics back. I think, I think Escape Comics is coming back. Um, with Lair... I was kind of, I was kind of leaning towards a headshot horror thing like one shot stories and I just like the headshot horror. I had a uh, uh, Andrew Kwan hook up my logo. Uh, if you don't know who Andrew Kwan is, he uh, has a, a crowdfunding campaign on right now on uh, Kickstarter actually. And he's just an awesome dude and an amazing talent. His uh, book is called Gel. It's like a post-apocalyptic anime type of sort deal. It's awesome. Um, but, uh, so he did the logo and headshot horror was something like one shot stories that were dark horror, whatever. That's just where, where I was at. Um, and now actually in doing this video and I'm just looking at the logo again, I mean, it just embodies like the simplicity of what I wanted to do with comics was to create an escape. Um, but at the same time, not just mere escapism, just have stories that still keep you thinking. I mean, I always love movies where at the when a movie was at, when a movie finished and ended, you always were left thinking about those characters and in their afterlife after the credits rolled. Like that universe is still going on, even though the credits are are are, have, are rolling and, and the movie's done. That universe is still active and engaged, and until the sequel comes back, if there's a sequel, you continue. Um, you're a witness to it, but if it doesn't. You know, there is no sequel. Doesn't mean that story, that you you know, that universe is complete. It's just it's another separate universe where you just don't know what's going on until you get the sequel. So I like to think of it as me trying to create. Okay, start up this full. Thank you. Me trying to create stories that um, keep you thinking anyway. So Under the Flesh was my first foray into comic book writing. Uh, let's go home here uh, just so you get an idea of uh of the book it's a a, a dark polka post apocalypse polka polka polka, polka. <laughs> can't even talk i'm nervous guys it's a post apocalyptic story um let's go first comic i guess that's what we need to do yeah here we go okay so i i had it labeled as a doomsday horror comic my last uh campaign i cold canceled it on a cg members tip he said if if your comics gate uh, you got to go Indiegogo. So I had a campaign for Under the Flesh to continue. I cold canceled it um, and and I jumped to, to Indiegogo. But a little about Under the Flesh real quick. Sorry for uh, rambling. It's a doomsday horror comic. I now had it labeled as a psycho-spiritual uh, apocalypse comic. So here's a little, little log line. A super soldier, clueless on his abilities, tries to protect his group post-Desolation Day where most of the global male populace have degenerated into savage fiends. Um, so here's the cover under the flesh. Uh, it's drawn by J.L. Giles. Uh, if you ever see any of my, uh, the, the few podcasts that I've guest starred on uh, or, or shows where I've talked, I, I've always mentioned a J.L. Giles. This guy is, um, he's my Batman. Uh, and I, I could say I'm the ro Robin the writer. Let's just put it that way. A very talented Robin writer, but he would put he would put this story together. He he made it happen, and um, so it's it's a web comic. It started as a web comic, and then we kick started the first three issues, um, the artwork to finance it, and uh, two issues were printed. The third one, 
still hasn't been printed. And then we had a kind of a lull where we couldn't produce any new content, any comic pages, because JL was doing some amazing work with Marvel. And actually, Under the Flesh is what put him on the map with Marvel, as he says. And I'm so grateful just to be able to have a story that caught the attention of an editor at Marvel that wanted to hire JL, because that's just amazing. So all in all, I think it's pretty rad that an editor was able to see JL's talent, artistic talent, uh, through through my storytelling, and I think that's just amazing. Um, so he, he got a gig. He was doing some Marvel stuff. And um, hey, guys at Marvel, I know you guys are going through your issues as well. I'm still available as a writer. Um, I'm sure there's some C-list characters that you can put me on, and I'd have fun. Uh, one off the top of my head would be White Tiger. Um, but again, of course, I'm rambling. So anyway, Under the Flesh is uh, my first. It was a first story, webcomic, um, Doomsday Horror. Here's a look at the cover. Uh, we have two issues. So if you go to undertheflesh.com, uh, you can take a look at the two issues here. Um, I have them broken down into chapters. So Ravage Road is kind of like my second um my second issue here we go whoops and internet's acting freaky i put ravage road and it's kind of loading up and it's thinking and this is what happens when you have dial up as your main internet provider i'm just kidding um where is this ravage road let's go ravage road come on let's refresh um, okay, we're getting there. Ravage Road, here we go. All right, we're here. No hiccups, perfect. So here's the second chapter, the second issue. Um, I updated, I, I, I haven't done any major updates just because uh, due to, you know, a jail schedule, I kind of I kinda put uh, Under the Flesh on the back burner a bit. Um, but I still have to upload content up until issue number three. But if you guys want to take a peek at Under the Flesh or just to get a feel of the type of stories I like to write, Under the Flesh, the way I was pitching it, my elevator pitch was it's kind of like why the last, it's like a mashup of why the last man uh, meets the walking dead and Captain America. As crazy as that sounds, I figured that even trying to advertise it as such, I'm like, they, it's like under the flesh is just different. I piggyback on the zombie tropes because I'm a zombie aficionado. I love the undead. It's my one of my favorite genres. Uh, the Walking Dead really helped me inspire to bring out under the flesh. But of course, I, I play on the the stereotypes of the zombie stereotypes. But it's to flesh it into something unique to make it truly different. Um. And under the flesh, I have, instead of zombies, you know, you can't call them zombies, right? That's just the rule. You just don't call them zombies. What do I got? I got them fleshers. This is what I call them. I call them fleshers. And here's one page here. Under the fleshers aren't your typical zombies because they're not zombies. This is how on the nose I can be. But people will see it as zombies. I know I drew them as zombies. But again, there's, there, there's a method to the madness. They look think feel but then they're different why aside from the savagery and dissolving skin the spooks have displayed some interesting behaviors so my main character is is uh ruben lobos he's a, a super soldier who doesn't know what he you know what, he, what he's capable of but he calls them spooks other people call them fleshers some people call them creepers i just i, I love i love playing on this but anyway they skulk in the shadows like predators so here we go they hide we got zombies that hide. We got what we call tricky zombies, right? They eat as if their stomachs are bottomless pits, right? That's typical zombie stuff, right? They intercommunicate like animals. So here we go. Zombies communicating. Uh, you know, it's inspiration from uh, George Romero, Day of the Dead, and, and um, what was it? Land of the Dead, I believe, uh, where, you know, it seemed like kind of like they could communicate it towards, uh, towards certain parts. Taste women in other ways. Ironic how the virus only infects men, like it devours the soul, reminding us of, of what's really left under the flesh. There's a method behind the title. 
Um, I originally had it called Flesh. This isn't zombie rape, guys. Trust me, it's not a zombie. There's a method. I will explain that when I eventually finish this book. I have three issues in. Um, it's supposed to be a six-issue miniseries, and again, I will eventually come back to it. It started as a webcomic, and it will come back. So if you guys are here and you're curious about it, I have little Gumroad links at the top. Um, and pretty much if you click on one of them here, it takes you to the cover. It's priced at zero dollars. My treat to you. Uh, just something fresh for those who enjoy uh, a post-apocalyptic stuff. Uh, here we go. A super soldier with untapped power tries to keep his group alive against devilish fiends and a new world order during the apocalypse. That's right, a new world order. I have a, a, a government type initiative that has survived because I don't think a government will be totally wiped out. I don't care how fast zombies can run. I don't care what. Like, There's a contingency plan. The government is ready. There will be people that are capable, that are well-equipped to live in a post-apocalyptic world. And, and believe a lot of it will be government. Um, that's just my take on it. So I felt that in a post-apocalyptic world, imagine having a government that's pretty much not what you you would expect in, in, in an apocalypse. But anyway, here's more of a, an unknown pathogen, which only infects males, is unleashed upon Earth. Global military powers are wiped out. Governments crumble. Societies collapse. Hope viciously fades. Yeah, hope can fade. It could viciously fade. How? It's done, right? It viciously fades, right? That's hope viciously fading. Through gunshots, through torn flesh, hope viciously fades. So here we go. Under the flesh, number two. And again, zero dollars. Uh, you guys could just put I want this and just leave it zero dollars my gift to you a super soldier with untapped power Yeah, we already said that okay So it's been two months since desolation day and Ruben survives in an abandoned college library with eight others One of whom is his jealous girlfriend Dina their lack of human contact brings turmoil with the appearance of the hellions biker gang Spurning a chain of events that caused Dina to ditch the group and Ruben to question the loyalty of love so Ruben is our main character. You saw him on the cover of issue number one. I'll take you a little a, a little peek into Ruben. I have this page called Your Poor Man's Super Soldier. Yep, because he's a super soldier, but he's your poor man's super soldier because he don't know what he's capable of. How is it possible for someone to be a super soldier and not know what the hell they're able to do, not know the extent of their powers? Well, that's something I also thought would be cool as far as a comic book. I always played a lot of video games uh, growing up, and I was always enamored with how you level up from level to level. You discover new things. So I figured in a comic book, imagine you, you have a main character who doesn't know what the heck he's, he, what he can do and what he can't do. Um, so here's a page, finally, after loading up, dial up, I'm sorry. I was in Fort Bishop during the skid, right? During uh, when thing went sideways, being injected with cell-fusing nanobots that fight viruses, boost strength, and enhance cognition. I wrote this in 2014. I was big on all this type of stuff, super soldiers, and you know, even government testing and that type of deal. Genesis, the Genesis, uh, ge the Genesis, the geneticist chose to snack on my face instead of briefing me about the bot program details. All I know is that I'm a poor man's super soldier, a biologically optimized transhuman, not transgender. For some reason, I had to put transhuman. I don't know how that came about. I just thought it was like not human, but doesn't mean not, <laughs> not, not mixed gender. So if that's confusing, sorry, but he's, he's a man, the man's man, and he's clueless about his new abilities. So that's Ruben Lobos, Special Forces, and he's our main character, hot-headed as well. Uh, macho attitude um, and he pretty much just wants to keep his group alive he's been through some traumatic experiences in, in, in Afghanistan and you know he just wants to keep people alive and safe so I mentioned the Hellions uh, I'll take you a little peek into the Hellions uh, see if I can find it here enter the Hellions here we go hopefully this page loads up pretty fast sorry about the delay but the Hellions are like in 2014 I I want to say that Sons of Anarchy had an influence on me as well. I just thought the fa the family aspect of it, the the brotherhood, the the fact that they're all out to 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 look out for one another, and no matter what, like like no matter what the, you know their brothers were up to, or no matter even if they did something that just was just horrific or whatnot, they still saw them for 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 more than 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 
you know, than the the tragedies or, or destruction left in their wake. And they and, and there was a real brotherhood. So here are the Hellions. There's a little logo there. I'll try to get a better shot on the logo. Here we go. We got um, a skull with horns and reaper scythes, cross reaper scythes. So anyway, these are the Hellions. Uh, the Hellions play a, 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 a big part in uh, Under the Flesh. Jewel, uh, she's a very special character. And, you know, Under the Flesh, guys, it's there for you. Um, if you want, the links are up on the top. Gumroad will take you, hopefully, to the link. Um, it's just so slow on my connection. All right, so here's Jewel. Here we got some of the NRI soldiers. NRI, that's that, that government New World Order I was talking about. It stands for the National Resurgence Initiative, the NRI. So we got some NRI here. We got uh, Jewel with a, a, a flesher and a, and a headlock. Um, and here we go. More spoilers. Um, here we go. I'll just read it out. Why not? Venturing out from the safety of the library in search of Dino, Ruby begins to cover more of his bot abilities after being ambushed by a swarm of ravaging fleshers. His bot abilities, biologically optimized transhuman, not transgender, transhuman. He's just, he's just, a, he's not a human being. He got, he got a lot of strength going on in them. Nanobot type. So in this scuffle, he comes to realize that the bloodthirsty fiends are eerily more than what they seem. However, Ruben soon encounters someone other than Dina along the ravaged road. He finds a surviving female soldier of the National Resurgence Initiative, learning the American government ain't dead yet. That's right, baby. The American government's alive and ticking, at least a chunk of it in my post-apocalyptic narrative. And when you get to issue three, I just scratched the surface with, with the NRI, with, with, with the government. But again, I, I had a whole big thing with this, uh, a little ambitious, started as a webcomic. We were able to print the first couple issues. Um, and again, you know, it, it, it was an amazing experience, but um, just because JL Giles was just doing some amazing work with Marvel, his schedule was cloudy and it's just, we had to put under the flesh aside like any good zombie under the flesh will rise again. Um, so I, I talk about it here for those who are uh, curious about me, want to know more about what makes me tick as far as being a comic book writer. Um, under the flesh is just my first stab at, at comic book creation. Um, Lair is my finished uh, product, my first finished product. And I got a lot more in the works. Uh, I'll show you guys in my next video some of my failed image pitches. So I've created some six-page pitches, four-page pitches, what have you, and I pitched them to the big boys, uh, got shot down, and but that's to be expected. Images is uh, one of the premier indie comic book uh, uh, publishers in, in our mainstream uh, medium for comic books, and they can cherry-pick off the top creators in the industry and, and push their creative works. Um, and, and, you know, right on for them because that's just amazing. Their, their whole image story, their whole story image was, of course, you know, rebelling from Marvel. And it's almost like they kind of fell into a little, I guess, routine-ish type stuff, although they have amazing books. So I'm not going to lie. I, I've, I, I back image more than I was back Marvel and DC because I had the disconnect with them. But anyway, now... Uh, I'm, I'm on the full true indie circuit, meaning independent books published outside of any type of big public publication, uh, oversight, um, any type of uh, uh, delegation or, uh, on, a, on a big publisher. So it, it, you, you get perspectives, raw perspectives and raw opinions and, and beliefs on, on those writers that could only come out of a true indie comic book. So I'm going to, that's where I'm leaning towards now with my hard earned dollars is to back more indie books. So guys, again, thank you uh, for checking out this video. Um, if you like any type of post-apocalyptic stories, if you even like uh, zombie narratives, uh, give Under the Flesh a go. It's on me, the first three issues. Just check it out. See if it, it piques your interest. Um, we had to put a halt on it, but it will be back. Um, I'm just trying to establish uh, a name for myself as a writer uh, with Lair, um, and uh, I will bring Escape Comics back. I think in going to Comicsgate, I think I should leave everything behind from before 
that was associated with my past crowdfunding days with Kickstarter. Um, so Escape Comics logo will be on the comeback. I just made that decision right now on this video. Um, it will be no more headshot horror, headshot horror. I love the freaking logo. I'm in love with this logo. But I think um, after Lair, I think it just, in what we're doing, what, what, what comics gain and everything, I think Escape Comics, it, it's, it's time for that comeback. Um, again, guys, uh, thank you for checking out the video. Um, we're at 495, which is amazing. And we're just trying to get 1,000. Like I said, just keeping it modest. Um, but hopefully uh, uh, more comic book fans could just take a look at this and see the type of quality that I'm putting out with Lair and the type of stuff that I put out with Under the Flesh. I'm just trying to put out top quality work as I uh, grow and, and mature uh, and solidify my, my, my writing craft. So again, guys, thank you so much for, for, for checking out my video. I appreciate the subscribes, the subscriptions, man. Thank you so much. And see you guys on the flip side later.